Hello everyone, this is Dean Brown. Uh, in today's session, let's explore how to draw trend lines in a more objective way. So since this question is one of the ideas I published, um, you know, how do we keep our subjectivity while drawing a trend lines? Now this is a very valid question because uh, when you ask two person to draw trend lines, uh, it may completely look different. For example, I may see a trend line somewhere um, like this, because uh, say that these are the points where the price has rejected many places. So this is my trend line. And someone else will say that, okay, this is my, this is their trend line because that's what they see as a more appropriate one, right? And someone else may see a uh, much different one. For example, it can also, somebody can draw it something like this and say that, this is my trend line, right? These are the two points where the price has rejected and uh, this is where, this is how the trend line should be, right? So um, because um, like, you know, it, it, the drawing trend lines is very subjective and uh, it, in, it, is, it gets influenced by lots of our uh, biases um, and uh, like, you know, lots of our experiences and all. So the idea of this session is like, you know, to make it more objective so that, um, Anyone who tries to <clears throat> define a trend line using this method will have a similar trend line. Okay, so another another problem with drawing trend lines manually is that um, we try to fit this into historical price action. For example, I've seen uh, seen some ideas published where, um, like you know, people claim or people um, like you know draw on trend lines something like this. Like you know, this is a trend line here down, and this is from the up, and this is a wedge together it's forming a wedge and when price has broken out it has gone up but do we really see this as a trend line uh, trend lines and uh, do we really see this as a wedge um, that's really questionable because now we know that the price has gone up it's easy to look at it as a wedge but if you go back and uh, you know if you go to replay mode and if you go here do you see really uh, do you really see a wedge here Right, it's it's not it's not very obvious at this location, this this point of time, and it can be anything, and it can be a complete downturn, and it may just keep going down further. Right, it's uh, so it's very difficult. Um, like you know, uh, it's very easy to overfit, or if it's very easy to fit on what has already happened. Also, like you know, in this session, the methods will also overcome this kind of possibilities, so that um, it will be more objective, and uh, will it will not influence our biases or a lot influence our uh, you know um, our other analysis and all sometimes you know what people do is um, so um, the other maybe there are other methods or other uh, biases which may say that the price has to go up now so we'll try to fit a pattern which matches this um, this kind of analysis so um, th those are the like kind of uh, drawbacks of doing it manually so that's so uh, that's why let's today let's try an algorithmic way so as you know, like, you know, I'll, I have developed lots of scripts related to trend lines and pattern recognitions and all. Um, and most of them are like, you know, uh, open source and free to use. Uh, you can um, you can try to use them as well. But in this session, like, and I'll try to explain how do I, um, you know, how do I derive this in, a, in via algorithm, okay? So the first thing, what we need to know for pattern recognition is a zigzag, zigzag indicator. So zigzag is a basic building block for any pattern recognition algorithm, right? So, so if you want to uh, define a pattern, um, you know, manually uh, and in an algorithmic way, first thing you need to do is put a zigzag indicator on your chart. So that is a trading view zigzag, um, trading view and zigzag. So this one, I take it else. So I can use this. I already loaded it here. And you can see that if I set reset defaults, there are a lot of things here. Um, you know, you don't need all these things. So to make it clear, just remove all these things, all these options, and let's just keep it plain, right? So that it's uh, easy to understand how um, you know um, how the price has moved between the like you know over the period of time. So, um, but I do not want to use this in today's session. I will use my own implementation. It's called recursive zigzag. You can also get this um, in the public library. So just search for recursive zigzag, and here it is. You can just use this one, um, you know, as well. That is, uh, like, you know, I prefer to use this because uh, one thing is this is my own implementation, and uh, you know, you can switch between different levels and see it in a different uh, views. 
uh, it will make it easy to you know identify the patterns or different patterns um, on the same chart right so i put this indicator on and what it does is it says zigzags in a different levels like for example this is a level one and a level two is it forms a zigzag based on the level one so if you look at this level two is slightly um not this one level two will be slightly um you know the line the distance between the pivots will be slightly higher so i'll highlight level two so this is level two so it's a little bit hard uh, you know the distance between between the pivots are a little bit higher and if you go back to level three it's much higher see this one is a the much on a higher level and if you go to level four sorry uh, level four it's much higher here so level five is the last one which is available uh, in this case so level five is here so let's start with the level five so level five if you look at this it's too far away from the current price so we can't really use level five here right only thing is um, in you can you can only draw a trend line till here because the data spy water available is here so it's not really useful similarly level four is also not useful for us uh, level four also ends just here there's no um, zigzag output at this point and if you go to level three <coughs> so level three is it has uh, trend lines extending till here so but if you look at this there are only two pivots and there are only three pivots here so it's not really ideal because uh, when we draw a trend line we need to draw a trend line we need to draw a line which at least touches three points right three pivots so three pivot lows but there are only two here you can actually extend this further and make it touch this uh, it actually forms a good trend line uh, but it's too long and uh, there is no matching trend line on the other side for example if i try to draw a trend line from here I can't do it for three points i can only do it for two points and it's not very convincing so um i don't see much um, like i don't a point in drawing trend lines at this level as well right so let's go to the next one next level so it's just three and then two so when you go to two there are like lots of small details here so what you can do So pivot lows can actually draw a trend line which touches more than one pivots one, two, and three. Right. So this is our trend line for lower uh, lower pivots. <clears throat> Similarly, I can do a trend line for higher pivots as well. So something like this. Or let's remove the let's remove the last one. Let's not do it for the last pivot because last last pivot is still uh, not confirmed let's see if we can do it for this one right so the previous last pivot so if you look at this this forms a perfect trend line for the higher pivot highs and furthermore uh, a trend line for the pivot high and trend line for the pivot low together creates a pattern so this is a pattern of converging triangle and the price has just broken out of the triangle and this this says like you know um uh, that you can apply your rules for trading your pattern you know if you know how to trade all these uh, different patterns you can apply those rules and make use of them all right and similarly uh, if you go further up let me go to level one level one is the last level so this trend line still holds true for this if you look at this uh, this touches lots of points so it still holds a very good trend line for level one as well for level um, for the pivot high maybe uh, this is a better trend line i'll remove this one so this is probably a better trend line for pivot highs right so it touches multiple pivots again three pivots minimum and then it actually instead of a converging triangle this time it is a kind of a channel like you know um equidistance channel uh it, it may need not to be um completely equidistance all the time so it's on an average it's like you know the 
price ranges between these two levels so like here too the price has broken out and you can say that you know this in this pattern how do you want to trade when the price has broken out you can apply that rule again right so that's all i think um and that's how you define a um, trend line or to draw a trend line on the chart in a more objective or algorithmic way let me know if you have any questions um and uh, Please go through the algorithms which I've already developed and uh, published open source and free and make use of this. Um, you know, you can also use that to study the trend lines further. Thanks very much. Have a good day.